I tell you, half the time uh, at The Rebel here, we spend fighting against censorship. That's not our purpose. We started The Rebel to, to tell the news. Our motto is telling the other side of the story. Um, but I mean, just think about it. Today we have news about licenses the government wants to put on news media. You saw when I was interrogated by the election commissioner for writing a book. And one of the most alarming trends that I see is when police become politicized and block our journalists. I, t I just want to be a journalist. I just want to tell the stories. But I find half our time and half our money is spent fighting the government. Here is one of the most disconcerting moments of this censorship. This was a few weeks back when our friend David Menzies went to ask a question to Ron McLean of Hockey Night in Canada. Maybe you don't care about sports, maybe you don't care about Don Cherry, but this is how it looked. Take a look. Hey Ron, how you doing? Great, how are you doing? Good sir, I'm just wondering how do you feel about the ratings for Hockey Night in Canada plummeting? No, no, uh, no, excuse no, me. No, 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 sir. Yeah, no, my wife. No, 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 uh, since Don Cherry uh, was fired. I wouldn't know, sir. Yeah. Huh? Excuse me. Sir, I'm, not, I'm no, in a public no, place. No, 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 Ron, why did you throw Ron under the bus? Please, 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 please. Excuse me. I'm in a public okay. place. What are you? Did you leave Ron alone? No, you're not. Don't hey, go. You're not hit me. What are you doing? You just hit me. Hi, you, you just, just hit me. I'm trying to get around you. You're holding back. Hey, are we going to take I'm, I'm trying to do my job. No, you're not trying to do your job. You're trying I'm to in a public with... place. Yes, officer. you're not allowed to hit me like that. I didn't hit you. I got on camera. Okay? Perfect. Listen, you can sit there and film me. But you can't shove the microphone in my face. Okay, then I'll be on my way. No, you won't. Not in here. Are you kidding me? I note that Ron McLean himself, who I regard as a bit of a coward, but he never said, stop talking to me, stop harassing me. In, in fact, Ron McLean went on to promise that he would do an interview with David Menzies. He hasn't kept that promise, but he had no time to say to the police, help, help, I'm being asked questions. Note that this is on a public sidewalk at a public facility and that David himself is polite. I mean, is he annoying? Well, if you don't want to be asked questions, I suppose any journalist is annoying. And these police physically shove him around, knock him down. And by the way, they change their excuse about three times. Well, but we're going to do something about it. In fact, we have. We have filed a lawsuit against the York Regional Police. Now, those are words I never thought I would say in my life. Suing the police. What am I, some Antifa hippie? Some leftist activist? No. I'm someone who says, you can't push our reporters, you can't knock our reporters down because you're protecting some CBC or some Rogers TV celebrity. That's not how we roll in Canada. And if you need a judge to tell it to you, so be it. And joining us now is our friend, David Menzies. How you doing, David? Hey, Ezra. Very good. I'm taking a real risk here. You know, I, work, I live in the Gark region, right? Yeah. Next time I get pulled over, <laughs> I think they might throw the book at me now. But anyways, well, it's important to stand up for that. There's two ways it could go. Yeah. One is they say, oh, huh, they're fighting back. Yeah. We might have to explain ourselves in front of a judge. Hmm. Huh. Let's actually do our jobs and be cops now instead of weird enforcers. The other is, yeah, maybe they're going to hit you with a vengeance and maybe us too. Well, you know, uh, time will tell, of course, but Ezra, I think it's important to uh, parlay on your point. Um, this is not about being anti-cop, certainly. This is actually about being pro-rule of law. Mm -hmm. uh, police officers are to uphold the law, but they can't break the law right. in upholding the law. What they did to me... Uh, let's see, there was assault, there was forcible confinement. Um, you noted the um, trail of lies in changing their story three times as to why they were detaining me. One was an alleged, an allegation that I had assaulted them, which was me just trying to get around them. The second one was trespassing while well, we were on public streets. Mm -hmm. um, this was a Rogers hometown hockey event. There were pavilions which were open to the public. I didn't even go to the pavilions. I was on the streets of Vaughan, Ontario. And then, of course, there was um, them saying where uh, it was almost like the minority report thought crimes yeah. unit uh, where we're trying to prevent you from harassing uh, Ron McLean as though that's somehow a crime in itself. Yeah, and the one guy saying, ha, you're not a journalist, the, the implication that, you know, <laughs> uh, no one is allowed to do an assault. Yeah. And just because they're wearing a uniform and a badge and a gun doesn't let them make an assault. 
Um, y if, if you had started swimming, it's unthinkable, but if you had gone up to them and started swinging punches, oh, you bet they'd have every right, as any private citizen would, to physically defend themselves and their cops are their pack and heat. But you were packing nothing other than a microphone. And it's almost like they were instructed in advance by Rogers and Ron McLean's staff, watch out for David Menzies, he's a really bad man, and silence him. Now, I'm just guessing, because when we actually saw Ron McLean, he never once asked for you to be silenced. Those cops did his dirty work for him. Oh, you know, Ezra, you don't have to guess, because Rogers did indeed have a discussion with the police. Once they got Ron to the area where he was doing autographs and sel selfies, I was outside waiting patiently, because I knew he'd have to go back to the, bro the uh, portable broadcast booth. Mm -hmm. And there was a fellow from Rogers, first name was Kevin, and it was almost like a huddle in football. All the, there was about eight or nine York Region cops, and I was filming through the window, mm -hmm. and Kevin is sort of uh, ordering them around. And then what happens? The nice cop comes out to me, and he's saying, oh, by the way, we're going to um, uh, organize a, an interview with some Rogers employee. And meanwhile, I see them sneaking them out. So he was doing, uh, that was their big master plan. He was causing a diversion so that they could sneak him out. But uh, I was looking over his shoulder all the time, right. and I didn't fall for it. How bizarre that taxpayer paid police, <laughs> yeah. and I don't know what a cop makes these days. It wouldn't surprise me if they're around the $100,000. For sure, yeah. So you've got hundred grand a year cops, and they're probably making overtime for working at night like yeah. that, or who knows what their shift is like. And you see, and I saw there was a lot of them. Yes. Um, wow, it must be nice to be a media company that can have hundred grand a year uh, cops with guns doing your PR for you and taking out uh, critical competitive journalists. That's so weird. It's so inappropriate. They're, I was so upset when I saw them uh, knock you down and then say, oh, be careful, buddy. Be oh, careful, yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah. It almost reminded me um, <laughs> of a scene of a group of young thugs taking on something. It reminded me of the opening scene of the movie The Joker a little bit. And um, I'm bothered when anyone hits yeah. a rebel reporter. We sued the guy who hit Sheila Gunn Reed a couple yep. of years back. We sued him for years and we got him. Yeah. When a cop hits your people unprovoked, unprovoked, yeah. you got to take your foot down, put your foot down. And we are. And we have filed a lawsuit and it is on a website now. Yeah. What's the website? Standwithdavid.ca. And uh, there's a promo going up uh, very shortly, might already be up, Ezra, where, uh, as, as you rightly pointed out, this is going to cost us tens of thousands of dollars to pursue. The York Regional Police, of course, have the endless uh, taxpayer trough to get their legal fees from. And yeah, you're right. I mean, this is not, and I don't want to say to anybody that, that, that is pro law enforcement, this is not an anti cop thing. This is anti bad cop, or at least anti cops behaving badly and you know I want to add another thing you, you mentioned all these police that were there um, who was footing the bill were they there on duty meaning the taxpayer was indeed uh, paying their salaries or were they paid duty cops so they're off duty but they're in uniform and Rogers is paying the $87 an hour whatever that fee is because there was tons of cops and when they escorted Ron back it was it was quite an amazing visual it's like a donut uh, where the outside are, are the police officers, about eight or nine of them, and Ron is the jelly in the donut. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and me walking alongside of them. It was surreal. Yeah. And, and another important point, as you mentioned too, Ron at no time said, no interviews, I don't want to talk to you, I feel like I, I, you're harassing me, because the very next week, Ezra, mm -hmm. I went back down to Ancaster, mm -hmm. uh, suburb of Hamilton, there was another Rogers hometown hockey there, and to my incredible surprise and delight Ron on camera and you can watch this video folks says on you know my word of honor I will give you an interview but you know not right now fair enough he's busy he's doing a broadcast mm -hmm. uh, it's been exactly two weeks to the day since I mm -hmm. last spoke to a Rogers communications person I'm wondering you know surely they're not going to just you know uh, play out the clock on this yeah. and, and wait for hockey season to end he said my word of honor yeah. so well, here let's show that clip right, right now take a look at this I really appreciate you coming out oh, thank you. I would love to do an interview with you we're in the midst of a live broadcast okay, so if you an interview Ron, with our publicity anytime well whether or not he actually does an interview with you goes to what his word of honor means yeah but for the uh, purposes of our lawsuit against the York Regional Police, it shows that you were not doing anything bad because 
he not only, Ron McLean not only doesn't think you were harassing him, he positively invited you to meet with him. So any pretext, any excuse there is gone. I'm hoping that this lawsuit, because it's a civil lawsuit, will smoke out the communications they had between Rogers and the cops. What did Rogers tell the cops? What did the cops promise Roger? Yes. Rogers, that's very interesting to me. Um, when we sued, when Sheila got hit by that thug, Dion Buse, I don't remember the exact amount, but it was over 30 grand. Um, these cops, as you point out, it's York Regional Police, are, they're, a, I don't know, they're probably a billion dollar organization, I'd have to check. Uh, they, they're full of lawyers. Yep. Um, taxpayers' money. Yep. I think if it goes all the way, there's just no chance this is going to be less than $50,000. And I, I mean, listen, we, we have a lot of legal bills around here, but I know what it costs us to take on Sheila's uh, assaulter. Every one of these cops will get a lawyer. Yeah. All their lawyers will be paid by the taxpayer. They'll probably try and rag the puck. They'll yeah. probably try and drag it out. I don't know what's going to happen here, but I think this is the right thing to do. I want them to, to recognize what they did to you was wrong. If they don't recognize it, I want a judge to tell them what they did was wrong. I, I mean, you weren't grievously wounded, but you don't no. knock a man down. Yeah. There's some damages there. And I want to know their communications with Rogers and in reverse, because I think that Rogers probably, um, as you suggest, uh, has some, well, we know that you saw Rogers coordinating the cops with your own eyes. I'd like to see that part of the iceberg under the water that is not visible right now. I think, look, you're not, you're not grievously wounded. Yeah. But that's not the point. It isn't. These no. are cops, and they can't shove reporters down because some fake celebrity like Ron McLean says so. Stand with David.ca. This is going to cost us a lot of money, but I think we have to do it. And you know what, Ezra? Uh, this is not a cash grab. I know that's a, a cliche. Everybody suing somebody for some amount of money says it's not about the money, and of course it's about the money. Well, if we win, but, we're not going to. We surely won't re recoup our costs of it. Yeah, but but it is the principle, and it is setting a standard, a yeah. benchmark moving forward. Allow us to practice journalism. And just last month too, of course, you know, I went down to the candlelight vigil for uh, uh, Iran's ex-terrorist in chief uh, Soleimani, and um, the I mean. It was hard to believe I was in Toronto as opposed to uh, Tehran. But we had a Toronto police officer telling me that if I dare utter the word terrorist one more time, um, he is going to sue me for breach of peace. And I said yeah. to him on camera, you mean, I can't call Osama yeah. bin Laden a terrorist. I think terrorist. he said he was going to arrest you. Uh, here, let's take a look at that clip. Yep. Okay. So I can't call a terrorist a terrorist? You're not, not in this sort of environment. No, you can't. Okay, because that's going to incite a breach of the peace. So, and that is Canadian law. Am I clear? If I was to call Osama Bin Laden, a terrorist, that would be against. Question, please, am I clear? I know you're not clear, sir. I don't. I can't call Osama bin Laden. And it incites a breach of the peace. You will be placed under arrest. You understand? Terrorist? Oh, what am I going to be arrested for? What am I going to be ter arrested for, sir? Peace. All right. Well, we can't sue the entire world. Uh, I didn't like what that Toronto cop did, but at least he didn't shove you to the ground like in York Regional Police. Like that. That Toronto cop was awful. Yeah. And I think we have unfinished business with him, David. Thanks for doing the journalism you do. You have been attacked by Jonathan Yaniv. We'll talk about that lawsuit later. <laughs> yeah. um, you've been attacked by uh, a manager at uh, the Radisson Toronto East. Yeah. Uh, you take a lick and you keep on ticking. But it's my duty as publisher and, uh, and boss of Rebel News to push back. And so I want our viewers, and really I want you to read the lawsuit. Yeah. So go to standwithdavid.ca. And I know you're already a supporter of Rebel if you're watching this because it's a premium channel. But um, if you, if you want to help me push back against the cops uh, with this lawsuit, we could sure use your help. So go to standwithdavid.ca. Thanks, David. Thank you, Ezra. And I just want to thank our viewers. They've always come through for us in the past. And without you, we are nothing. So my thanks in advance. There you go. Thanks. Thank you. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.